Aside from lines at the DMV, everything ends eventually, even entire species. In fact, it's estimated that 99% of all creatures that have ever lived on our big blue ball are now extinct. That's over five billion species. That means there are long departed animals none of us will ever get to see again. Well, today, I've got some extinct and supposedly extinct animals that we absolutely can see. From prehistoric beasties in our oceans to incredible footage of the last Tasmanian tiger, here are some extinct animals people caught on camera. Do the Quagga The Quagga might sound like the name of a cheesy 80s dance hit, but it's actually what this odd-looking fella's called. But Mr. Amazed, that's just a weird zebra I hear you say. And you aren't entirely wrong. Quaggas were a special subspecies of zebra with a unique pattern that made them look half zebra, half horse. The beautiful animals lived in South Africa and were first classified by European settlers in 1778. Almost immediately, however, the settlers began hunting them for their coats and meat. <sighs> Why am I not surprised? Over a hundred years of this later, they were declared extinct in 1883, when the last quagga passed away in captivity at Amsterdam's Artist Magistra Zoo. Man, the animal you've been seeing in these photographs isn't that one, though. It's a different mare that was housed in London Zoo in the 1870s. The London Zoo quagga is the only one ever recorded, so even the fact we have this small glimpse is insanely lucky. While they were alive, quaggas were sociable creatures, just like their plain zebra cousins. Unlike their cousins, however, they were more docile, which unfortunately made them easy prey. It might not be completely over for the quagga, though. In 1987, the Quagga Project was founded with the goal of selectively breeding modern zebras to produce offspring with quagga-like stripes. And it looks like they're well on their way. Unfortunately, the technology doesn't yet exist to clone them outright a la Jurassic Park. But maybe that's not such a bad thing, eh? A Quoll Quandry I wouldn't be surprised if you'd never heard of an eastern quoll. I certainly hadn't before like a week ago, but there's a reason for that. The cat-sized marsupial was declared extinct in its homeland of Australia way back in 1963. This grainy image published in a 1960 zoo guidebook was the last known photo ever taken of one. So what happened? Well, as humans migrated into Oz in the 1800s, they brought with them several new species. Chief among these arrivals was the red fox, which was only brought over so it could be recreationally hunted. Lucky for the foxes, many of them escaped and even thrived. Unluckily for the quoll, they thrived by feeding on them. This, along with a mixture of disease, poisoning, and persecution, eventually led to the quolls being utterly wiped out by 1963. Or were they? Luckily, over in the neighboring island of Tasmania, a small population of the marsupial survived. Because of this, we've got some far better pics of the little fluffballs than that old photo I showed you earlier. Aww. In an effort to reintroduce the species to the mainland, WWF and several Australian charities got to work in 2018 and released 20 captive bred quolls into Booterie National Park. They were monitored by trail cams and trackers, and the park has an extensive fox management program, so it was hoped that they'd fare well. Sadly though, despite showing initial progress, none ended up surviving. And when a second group of 40 was introduced in 2019, they too had vanished by 2021. Jeez. These first attempts haven't stopped further efforts, though. In May 2023, the charity Aussie Ark released a new batch of 50 eastern quolls into Australian Wildlife Sanctuary, Barrington Tops. They hope this latest and biggest load will be the push needed for the quolls to finally take hold. Maybe third time's the charm. Hmm, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Tree Lobster If you're creeped out by bugs, you might want to look away right around now. Okay, meet the Lord Howe Island Stick Insect, fittingly nicknamed the Tree Lobster. Crikey, look at the size of this guy. Capable of reaching whopping lengths of 8 inches and native to, you guessed it, Lord Howe Island in New South Wales, these fellas absolutely dominated the island at one point. 
In fact, the nocturnal vegetarians were so common that they were regularly used as fishing bait and still retained a strong population. But everything changed one fateful day in 1918. That year, an Australian ship, the SS Macambo, ran aground on the island, and black rats that were hiding aboard rapidly spread across the land. This was a disaster. See, rats eat insects, making the tree lobsters all-you-can-eat buffets unequipped to defend themselves against the invasive species. Just two years later, all of the tree lobsters had disappeared, and the species was assumed extinct. And for over 40 years, there was no reason to dispute this. Then in 1964, a group of climbers claimed to have spotted a few fresh-looking carcasses on the nearby Balls Pyramid, the remains of a long-gone volcano 13 miles out from Lord Howe Island. They snapped some photos, but the spire of rock was so remote that nobody acted until 2001, when Aussie scientists David Priddle and Nicholas Carlyle set out to investigate the area. Lo and behold, they found 24 of the stick insects alive and well in a shrub. How exactly they wound up on this strange spire in the ocean is a mystery, but the important thing is, they existed. Two years later, researchers returned and collected two breeding pairs to try and establish an alternate population. The first pair went to a private breeder and the second to Melbourne Zoo. But the first pair promptly kicked the bucket, leaving the fate of the entire species on the second. No pressure then. So, how did they do? Well, fast forward to today and there are over 800 adults and 3,500 nymphs at Melbourne Zoo. Wow, and even more are living in other zoological societies around the world. What's more, serious eradication efforts have been made to quell the hordes of harmful rats on Lord Howe Island and reintroduce the big bugs to their homeland. Incredibly, over 200,000 rats have been taken out and the biodiversity of the island is thriving again. Now that's what I call playing the long game. The Ghost Whale I can understand people losing track of a stick and sex species, but how could someone possibly lose an entire whale species? I'm talking about Omura's whale, a species that was officially discovered in 2003 before almost immediately being considered extinct. Though small by whale standards, Omura's whales have still reached impressive lengths of around 38 feet, the same as two giraffes stacked on top of each other but their population numbers were so low that only a handful of possible sightings happened in the years that followed their discovery. Like this one, photographed by whale watchers off the coast of Hualien, Taiwan. What's more, any potential sightings were likely to have been a super similar but far more common species, the bride's whale. So for over a decade, Omura's whales were thought to have all but disappeared. In 2015, however, marine biologist Salvatore Curcio and his team of researchers published a very special report. Over the prior two years, they'd been looking for the whales and found and photographed 25 of them off the coast of Madagascar. Now, for the first time, the world had definite proof that this big old elusive boy was very much still kicking. That said, they're still one of the least studied whales on the entire planet. I wish we knew a bit Mura. Bygee Blues. Dolphins are one of my favorite animals. They're just so cute. So when I heard about what happened to China's national dolphin, the Baiji, I was cut up. Traditionally, the river-dwelling dolphin was venerated by the Chinese, who saw it as a river goddess and actively worked to protect the species. Unlike regular saltwater dolphins, these freshwater cousins have a prominent snout, hunched back, and unfortunately, poorer eyesight. Back in the 50s, there were around 6,000 of them dwelling in the River Yangtze, but by 2006, they'd been declared functionally extinct, meaning not enough survived to effectively reproduce. This photo snapped in 2002 shows the last confirmed Baiji, Kiki, who died in captivity that same year. Damn. So what the heck happened to this once flourishing species? Well, we've got to go back to 1958. Chairman Mao Zedong's Chinese Communist Party had begun rapidly industrializing society in the Great Leap Forward. And as part of this movement, he denounced China's veneration of the Baiji. But spoiler alert, the industrialization didn't go well. Farmers were reassigned to other jobs and food was poorly distributed, leading to massive food shortages. 
So the people, stricken by the deadliest famine in history, turned to desperately hunting the now unprotected Baiji en masse. Most wanted dolphins for their meat, yet others hunted them to make gloves or bags to sell. Man. And even after the famine subsided, the Baiji couldn't catch a break. China's human population began growing fast, leading the Yangtze to be fished more and more, and the dwindling dolphins were accidentally slain by illegal fishing techniques like dynamite. In 1979, the Chinese government declared this species endangered, and in 2006, it was functionally extinct, which is one of the biggest falls from grace I can imagine. Not only had they once been revered in the country, Baiju were the only living representative of the Lipotidae dolphin family, and with their passing, 20 million years of evolution came to an end. Damn. Man, that one was a real downer, wasn't it? It might cheer up a bit, though, if you hit those like and subscribe buttons. That way you'll never miss any of my amazing content. All done? Okay, let's get back to it. Came and went. If I say spectacled caimans, you might imagine this group of snappy crocodilians are known for their snazzy taste in eyewear. You'd be wrong, though. The name actually refers to the distinct ridge that sits between their eyes. Bummer. Among the various species, none were more mysterious or elusive than the Rio Apoporus caiman. In fact, Rio Apoporus was so unbelievably rare that we basically know nothing about it. I'm dead serious. We know it had an elongated, thin snout, was pale with dark blotches, and lived in Colombia. That's basically it. The mystery snapper was first discovered as recently as 1955, but following this was hardly seen again until the last known specimen passed away at a zoo in 1989. Just 34 years after being discovered, the Rio Apoporus was gone. There wouldn't be hide nor hair of the caiman for another 30 years until a new hope emerged. An American conservationist named Forrest Galante. Galante is also a television personality and hosts a show named Extinct or Alive, which focuses on trying to find long-lost animals to see if they're, well, you get the idea. In 2019, the show took aim at the Rio Apoporus Cayman, and Galante headed off into the Colombian forest to try and grab a live one. As unlikely as the idea sounded, though, he actually pulled it off. Galante was filmed catching one of the supposedly extinct beasties, and the scientific community cheered. Or did they? It turns out Colombian scientist Sergio Balaguerra Reina had been on his own expedition months before Galante and documented a whopping 105 of the caimans in an academic journal. Not only that, but he'd also given Galante crucial information in order for him to find them himself. Yet Sergio wasn't credited whatsoever in Galante's show, and the American television host took all the credit for rediscovering the species. Ah oh, man. Now, I'm not saying Galante's all bad for this, but that's pretty shady, don't you think? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments down below. Sea Monster? It was January 2023, and on a strip of land known as Assateague Island in the Atlantic Ocean, naturalist and photographer Alan Scalar made a discovery that left him shocked. Alan patrolled the tiny island between Virginia and Maryland regularly in case anything interesting washed up on the shore. But on that fateful day, he saw what seemed to be a prehistoric monster lying on the sands. Yep. Huge armored beast that looked half fossilized was sprawled menacingly along the shore. What the hell was it? Some kind of ancient monster that had somehow survived since the time of the dinosaurs? Well, kind of. What Alan found that day was actually an Atlantic sturgeon, a colossal bottom-feeding fish that can reach around 15 feet in length. That's longer than a Volkswagen Beetle. The mega fish has remained largely unchanged since the Jurassic period some 200 million years ago. Whoa. That being said, they might be joining their dino friends soon if we aren't careful. Sturgeon species everywhere are disappearing rapidly as they're hunted for their meat and caviar. In fact, sturgeons are the most endangered species group on Earth. Man, how sad to think an ancient species that survived a mass extinction could disappear at our hands. Thankfully, the WWF and other conservation charities are taking measures to try and save our prehistoric pal by restoring its habitat and clamping down on illegal fishing. 
So here's hoping this big bony boy can make a speedy recovery. The Pinocchio Lizard Over in Ecuador in 1953, some explorers were trekking through a forest when they came across a very strange little lizard. It would later become known as a horned anole, or Pinocchio Lizard. Not because of its penchant for lying, but for that immense schnoz. The distinctly hot creature had never been sighted in recorded history, so its discovery was super exciting. In the 13 years that followed, however, only five more were ever found. Then after the 60s, they disappeared entirely. Scientists scoured the Ecuadorian forest for decades, hoping to catch a glimpse of one of these nosy reptiles. But alas, the unique species was assumed extinct. Until that is in 2005 when a group of lucky bird watchers stumbled on this little fella crossing a road near where the very first one was found. The horned anole was alive, if incredibly rare. The photo did the rounds on the internet and eventually caught the attention of anole expert Steve Poe in 2009 who led an expedition into the Ecuadorian forests to find more of them. And it was a success. Poe found a substantial number of the enigmatic creatures observing that they move super slowly and live mostly in trees where they're incredibly well camouflaged. No wonder they stayed hidden for so long. Because of this and their scarcity, we actually know very little about them. We do know that only males have that long nose, which is actually a proboscis, leading many to believe that they use it to show off to lady lizards. Personally, I wanted to believe they sword fought with them, but the snoot is apparently too flexible for that. Aw oh, man, they can wiggle it though, which comes in handy when they want to chow down on a delicious insect dinner without the hulking thing getting in the way. No word on what happens if they tell a lie just yet though. The Tombstone Thunderbird. And now it's time for something completely different. Let me tell you a tale about the Old West, partner. Our story starts in Tombstone, Arizona. Founded by a prospector in 1879, the town's early years were plagued by lawlessness. But in 1890, something happened that was far stranger than a saloon gunfight. An article appeared in the local newspaper claiming that a colossal 160-foot winged beast had been shot down just outside of town. The monster, dubbed the Tombstone Thunderbird, was supposedly hairless and featherless with wings like a bat and a mouth full of sharp teeth. Jeepers! After managing to shoot it out of the sky, a group of men dragged the carcass back to Tombstone where they strung it up for everyone to see. Or at least that's how the tale goes. Now, you might think this is all a load of hooey, but what if I showed you this photo of the beast? <laughs> what the heck? Yep, in fact, it's not the only photo purporting to show the winged monstrosity. Several others have popped up online over the years, too. Spooky. What could it have possibly been, then? If you ask me, it looks a lot like a pterosaur. You know, the giant winged dinosaur that went extinct 66 million years ago? Okay, actually, that sounds way too wild to be true. And sorry to disappoint, that's because it probably is. Those photos? Yeah, they're big fat phonies. While a story about a giant bird did appear in Tombstone's newspaper, the pics are actually from a TV show that aired back in 2000 called Freaky Links. The show featured an episode on the Thunderbird legend and created props in order to recreate it. Since then, conspiracy theorists have spread said photos online but unfortunately, it's nothing but misinformation. Fortunately, however, I'm totally happy with pterosaurs remaining long extinct. Wakanda forever! Ah, the Black Panther. Such a cool superhero and a cool animal. But did you know rather than their own unique species of big cat, Black Panthers are actually an incredibly rare variant of leopard? Yep, they have a super high concentration of the pigment melanin, which gives them their intense black color. Unfortunately, it also makes them very attractive to hunters. Hunted for their pelts and forced out of their habitat by deforestation, African black panthers were largely MIA for over 100 years. In fact, the last confirmed specimen was photographed all the way back in 1909, a snap that's sadly been lost to time. This grave outlook led many to question, had African black panthers gone extinct? 
In an attempt to find out, wildlife photographer Will Barad Lucas set out on an expedition to Kenya in 2018 to try and capture a pic of one. Will set up camera traps to watch for the majestic beast and waited. At first, he got nothing. The second night, also nothing. Then, several nights later, his heart leapt. There it was. Because of copyright blah blah blah, I can't show the actual photos here, but they looked almost exactly like this. Wow. He tracked the feline for several days afterwards and snagged even more incredible snaps, including this crazy footage captured with the help of researchers from San Diego Zoo. Then, the job was done. After 100 years without evidence of their existence, Will rocked up and proved they were still alive and well within days. Man, that's great news for Will, but even better news for the Panthers. The Dino Rat Way back in the Mesozoic era, during the time of the dinosaurs, mammals were pretty low in the pecking order. The world was ruled by the terrible lizards, and our ancestors were mostly tiny subterranean creatures that kept out of their way. The Cuban Solenodon is a bizarre holdover from this time. Only recently thought to be extinct, the Solenodon is actually the last survivor of an ancient species of insectivores that lived some 76 million years ago. With a long snout, sharp teeth, and a venomous bite, it certainly sounds like it belongs in a Jurassic Park movie. We humans first came across our savage little friend in 1861, when German naturalist Wilhelm Peters found a small number of them in a Cuban forest. Over the next 29 years, 36 more specimens were found, but after 1890, nada. Zilch. By 1970, many had concluded that the Cuban Solenodon had joined the dinosaurs in that great museum in the sky. That is, until just a few years later. In 1974, scientists stumbled upon a single specimen in the Alexander Humboldt National Park. And this miraculous discovery encouraged others to scour the park for the elusive mammal. But it didn't prove easy. By 2016, a grand total of 11 have been found, with far fewer being photographed. See, as well as their seemingly tiny population, Solenodons are burrowers and only infrequently emerge from their subterranean homes. I mean, I get that, but only 11? Hey, at least they can just about form their own soccer team. The Living Fossil We all have that one friend who disappears for months on end then just reappears again and acts like nothing ever happened. Well, back in the 1900s, biologists dealt with the most extreme example of this imaginable. Around 420 million years ago, the colacanth appeared in the oceans of the Devonian period. This ancient fishy was covered in armor-like scales and hosted eight fins, which moved kind of like our arms and legs. The colacanth thrived for hundreds of millions of years, but then it suddenly vanished from the fossil record at the end of the Cretaceous period, 66 million years ago. As you might be aware, an asteroid crashed into Earth at this time, causing a mass extinction that wiped out over 60% of all life on Earth. So it seemed logical that the colacanth was one of the many casualties. Imagine the absolute shock on the faces of scientists then when this thing just turned up again. That's right. In 1938, Marjorie Courtenay Latimer, curator of the East London Museum in South Africa, was informed of a supremely bizarre fish that had been caught in a trawl net. She went to see the beast and immediately knew it was something special. But it couldn't be a colacanth, could it? Well, after contacting a local fish expert, she was flabbergasted to find her suspicions were right. It was. The scientific community flipped the heck out and immediately began looking for more. And they succeeded. Since then, we've encountered many of these ancient sea dwellers giving us some truly incredible images. They're still rare finds hidden away in deep volcanic areas, but they're very much alive. Okay, but if the colacanth disappeared from the fossil record 66 million years ago, how the heck did it just reappear after all that time? Well, your guess is as good as mine. It's possible that colacanth fossils from later eras do exist, but we just haven't discovered any of them yet. It's also possible that colacanths living in different parts of the ocean were subject to wildly varying conditions, some of which ultimately eroded evidence of their existence. Alternatively, of course, they could have all been abducted by aliens millions of years ago, then dropped back off in the 1900s as a joke. <laughs> anything's possible. The Tassie Tiger 
Of all the animals we've seen so far, none have quite as tragic a tale as the thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger. Despite that nickname, the beautiful creature wasn't actually a tiger at all, but a marsupial, a mammal with a pouch for its young. Indeed, Tasmanian tigers were more closely related to dunnarts and quolls than big cats. The strange beast went extinct on mainland Australia around 3,500 years ago, but a small population remained on the island of Tasmania. When European settlers first arrived on Tasmania in 1803, there were around 5,000 of them left. Thylacines were carnivores that preyed mostly on other marsupials, small birds and rodents, and they could open their jaws almost 80 degrees to snap them up which looks pretty scary. But they were infamously shy creatures who kept their distance from humans whenever possible. Can't say I blame them. Because of how little they interacted with people though, many came to incorrect conclusions about the Tassie tiger. A common belief was that they regularly preyed on livestock like chickens and sheep. This photo in particular was widely distributed as proof but it had been cropped to hide the fact that thylacine was actually in captivity. And even if they did sometimes nab chickens, it's now believed their jaws were far too weak to hunt sheep. Regardless, people at the time began to blame the animal for all their farming woes. So a Tasmanian farming corporation named Van Diamond's Land Company started offering a bounty on thylacines as early as 1830. Man, that's rough. But it got worse. Starting from 1888, the Tasmanian government got involved too. They began paying one pound for every head of the poor creature that was brought to them, about $210 in today's terms. Between then and 1909, the government claimed it paid 2,184 bounties, though it's believed far more were slain than was reported. From there, the animal never really recovered and the species would be hunted until 1930 when the last wild specimen was taken out by a farmer. <sighs> Though it had been driven from the wild, it wasn't quite gone yet. The very last thylacine in existence lived in captivity at the Hobart Zoo in Tasmania where it cut a lonely figure. This incredible footage lives on, but sadly, thylacines didn't. They went extinct in 1936. The last one was left out in the cold and passed away due to neglect, just 59 days after the government had finally decided to protect the species. Jeez, that's awful. There have been occasional supposed sightings of the creatures since the 1930s, but none of these have ever been confirmed. Action was taken far too late to save them and researchers are determined to prevent such a tragic loss from happening again. In a wild twist, several organizations have even set out to investigate cloning the species. One such company is Colossal Biosciences, which have successfully extracted DNA from a preserved thylacine specimen. They aim to one day revive the Tassie tiger, return it to its homeland, and help it flourish again. I don't know about you guys, but I thoroughly hope they succeed. We killed them off, seems only fair that we bring them back, right? Perfectly Preserved Sometimes extinct animals can be seen in the flesh without the help of old footage. And no, you don't need to take a trip in the TARDIS. See, in some extremely rare situations, animals become naturally mummified when they pass. This is when extreme cold, dryness, or a lack of oxygen prevent the normal decaying process from happening and instead preserve the bodies incredibly well. Which is exactly what happened with one of these big boys, the moa. This huge wingless bird could grow up to 12 feet tall and was near native to New Zealand where nine species roamed the country for thousands of years. Until humans arrived, of course. Yep, when Polynesian settlers turned up in the late 13th century, they needed to eat and the giant birds proved easy meals. Completely unequipped to defend themselves from human attack, all nine species of moa bird were wiped out by hunters around 600 years ago. Man, I wish I could have seen them. Well, I can, or at least parts of them. This is a mummified moa foot, and I can't decide if it's more creepy or awesome. Either way, it's a remarkable glimpse at what this creature really looked like. The menacing claw was 
was discovered in 1987 by cave explorers in a New Zealand cavern with the skin and muscles still attached. And there's more. Check out this mummified head. Okay, this one definitely teeters more towards creepy, but it's still amazing. This specimen was supposedly sold to a New Zealand museum in 1943, though we don't know much more than that. But if birds aren't your thing, I've got something even more impressive for you. The woolly mammoth. Probably the most iconic ex-animal, second only to the T-Rex. Roaming the earth from around 300,000 years ago until just 3,900 years ago, mammoths were eventually felled by a combination of hunting and climate change. However, given that they lived during an ice age, when things were pretty darn cold, mummified mammoth remains are actually relatively common. With that said, meet Yuka, the most perfectly preserved woolly mammoth ever found. Wow. Discovered in Siberia in 2010, she's estimated to have been between six to eight years old when she passed some 39,000 years ago. She probably fell into water or got bogged down in a swamp and couldn't resurface, causing her entire body to freeze, after which it lay undisturbed for all this time. So if you want to look as good as you do now for your 40,000th birthday, you know what to do. But what if old Yuka isn't actually as old as we think? What if she's so well preserved because mammoths still walk the earth today? Like most extinct animals, there have been countless supposed sightings of both moas and mammoths over the years. This photo was posted on Reddit fairly recently, and the OP claimed it's an old pic taken by one of his family members and shows a hunter posing with a slain mammoth. But like all of these claims, it's almost definitely bogus. The dude's leg looks kind of wonky, right? And what about his complete lack of hands? Yeah, this is a poorly generated AI pic with some filters applied to it to hide the imperfections and make it seem old. If mammoths walk the earth today, we definitely know about it. But that's not to say they'll never walk the earth again. Mummified animals are often excellent sources of DNA. And because we have such well-preserved specimens, both the moa and mammoth are prime candidates for resurrection via cloning. Hell, researchers were even able to extract flowing blood from Yuka's remains. Wow. Whether or not we'll ever be really able to resurrect these ancient creatures remains to be seen, but the idea sure is exciting. What do you think? Will we ever see woolly mammoths walk the earth again? And should we even be messing with such power? With that ethical quandary, I'll take my leave. Which of those extinct and not so extinct creatures did you find the most amazing? Are there any other long gone life forms you wish you could see? I'm all ears, so until next time, thanks for watching.